Amen. And it reads, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. And those beside the road are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart so they may not believe and be saved. And those on the rocky soil are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no firm root. They believe for a while, and in time of temptation, fall away. And the seed which fell among the thorns, these are the ones who have heard. And as they go on their way, they are choked with worries and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to maturity. And the seed in the good soil, these are the ones who have heard the word in an honest and good heart and hold it fast and bear fruit with perseverance. True Bible, our message for this morning is, what is the condition of your soul? Right. Amen. All right. What is the condition All right. of your soul? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. I, I, I frequently look at, I know Sister Mike may not think so, but I frequently look at the plants she has growing out there. I, I don't touch them because that was an official decree <laughs> that came down and said, do not water these plants and don't touch them. So I don't water them and I don't touch them as long as they green. And I ain't never had to water them or touch them. It's all about the soil. And when we talk about soil, we're talking about growth. Right. Yeah. See, in this yeah. race we call our Christian walk, it's all about growth. It's all about producing more fruit. All right. You cannot produce new flowers. You cannot produce more fruit if the soil in which you have been planted is void of nutrients. Yeah. If the soil is no good soil, See, you got different types of soil. And make no mistake about it, everybody is associated with the soil that is in their container. And I can look at you, let me back up and get an eye out of it. God can look at you and tell how fertile your soil is. We, 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 got, we got several different types of soil. We're only going to talk about four different types of soils today. In today's lesson, we got three soils, which we're going to call superficial soil. I don't know if you know about superficial soil. Superficial soil is soil that's on the surface. Soil that is that that that, that that's on the it's topography. It doesn't go deep. There's no depth to it. Yeah. It's surface level soil, and, and you can't do much with surface level soil. But unfortunately, the vast majority of soil that's out there in the world, I'm talking about people now, is superficial soil yeah. when it comes to spirituality. Yeah. And there's one other type of soil, it's called essential soil. All right. Right. Come that on is now. the minority of people in the world. All right. Those are the people who have been enriched. The people who have been fortified with the nutrients, yes. Yes. with the minerals, with the vitamins, and all that's necessary to sustain full growth. Yeah. What's the condition of your soul? Mm -hmm. That's all right. I'm going to come back to that over and over again because God wants you to understand that you are either in one category or the other. Right. You're either superficial or you're essential. Yeah. What's the condition of your soul? Amen. We look at the text today. We have Jesus, as he is so eloquently always doing. He's, he's going out and he's performing ministry. And, and he's gotten to this point in his ministry where the multitudes have, have gathered around him. And, and this is, is, is also spoken of in the Gospel of Matthew. And, and Matthew gives you certain details and Luke's give you other details. And 
I chose to go with the Dr. Luke because uh, for whatever reason, Luke always tends to be a little bit more detailed. See, he was a, he, Matthew was a, a, a Levi, was a tax collector. That's his name, uh, Levi. Matthew, he was a tax collector. He just kind of got to the point in what he was talking about. But see, Luke was a physician. And he was very detailed in his accounts of things, and he added an additional detail. So for sake of clarity, I figured I'd give you the additional details that Luke provides. Right. So Luke says that, 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 that Jesus was going out, and he, the multitude was gathering around, and Jesus felt the need to teach them, and, 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 he, and he taught them this parable. And verses uh, 4 through 10 tells you the parable, and verses 11 through 15 explains it to you. And Jesus told his disciples in verses uh, 9 and 10 that the reason I speak in parables, the reason I speak in short stories about regular life to explain spiritual things is because certain people out there will understand it. Those whom I have chosen will understand the worldly example unto a spiritual goal. And there are other people out there who I don't want to understand. And so when I give them this story of a worldly example to talk about a spiritual goal, they're going to look crazy and dumbfounded. Right. Jesus reveals his will to whomever he wants. So let's talk about these soils and, and then let's go straight to the explanation. It says in verse 11, as he's talking to the disciples, he says, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. All right. All right. You hold in your hand in the form of the Bible, the word of God. Yeah. It is the seed. When we're talking about seed, we're talking about something that is meant to be implanted. All right. yeah. Uh, the, yeah. A seed does no good, Pastor Charles, unless you plant it. Yeah, that's right. Amen. So the seed which needs to be planted is the word of God. Amen. It says, now the seed is the word of God. Basically, he's saying the seed is me. Mm -hmm. I am the living word of God. Yeah, See, to us, it's the Bible. It's the written word based upon what the living word said 2,011 years ago. Yeah. But back then, 2,011 years ago, it was the walking word of God. Yes. He says, I am the seed. Whatever I say, plant it in your heart. Yeah. Is what Jesus is getting to. He's saying here now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. And then he's talking about this, 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 this sower, this God, this planter, this farmer, if you will, who wants to go out and plant his crops All right. at the beginning of the season. He says, and those that fell beside the road, talking about the seed, when that soil went out to plant, he cast his seed. You ever seen somebody cast in seed? They pick up seed and they just throw it out and they spread it. They yeah. just throw it out. You ever uh, uh, saw Bermuda grass? Mm -hmm. You can go buy Bermuda grass from Home Depot and it comes in a bag and they tell you when you plant it, just take it and cast it. Right. Don't worry about if some get on the sidewalk. Don't worry about if some get in your neighbor's yard because if it's going to grow, it's going to work its way over there anyway. So it just says just cast it. Just cast it out. So think in terms of somebody casting out Bermuda seed. He says, and some of it uh, uh, fell on the roadside. It says, and those beside the road are those who have heard then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart. All right. Go up with me to verse 5. The sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell beside the road, and it was trampled underfoot. And the birds of the air ate it up. Come back to verse 12. And those beside the road are those who have heard, then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart. All right. Let, let, let me tell you something. Hmm. There are some places that seed gets cast and there is no soil. Uh -huh. Basically, there are people who get hit with the word of God and has nothing whatsoever in and of themselves to sustain its growth. Right. So the first soil <laughs> is no soil. The first type of person out there is a person who has no depth, 
no understanding, and whenever they get anything of spirituality, they can't contain it. And look at the text. It says, the devil comes and takes away the word. Think of a bird flying over, and he sees an opportunity. The seed which falls in grass, the seed which falls in rocks, it's a little difficult for that bird to get his beak down in that grass. He's got to spot it first. You play the grass, maybe hiding it. But the bird can see that seed that's on the road. Right. So when he's flying, he's like, oh, that's easy pickings. <laughs> Come on now. Hey, those who are out there who really ain't in it to win it, the devil sees you. The devil of the sky, the prince of the power of the air. Yeah. See, the devil yeah. is unlike to a bird. That's yeah. what the text says, the bird. Uh -huh. In verse 13, it says, the devil That's right. hey. uh -huh. comes and picks that seed right up. So I come and I knock on your door. Or I come to your dorm room. Or I come to your house. And you really don't want to know the truth. You want somebody to talk to you, to comfort you, to make you feel good, but you're really not ready to make a true commitment. Oh, wow. But you're faking and shaking. Yeah. So I hit you with the word, yeah. and it don't stick. <laughs> it falls right off the wall. Yeah. That's that devil bird Amen. coming and pecking it right off the side of the road because yeah. there is no soil. Yeah. You don't want to be a person with no soil. No. Yeah. I go out and we witness, Pastor Richardson. And we give people the gospel and they sit there and they listen and in our human appraisal, we think that they fix it to give their life to Christ. Right. We spend 30 minutes talking about the gospel of salvation and at the end, we say, now if you die today, would you go to heaven? And they say, no. Mm. Wow. Ooh, man, we've been about 45 minutes. <laughs> what you mean you don't understand? Oh, no. Well, they just go off in the left field. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I look at him and he look at me. <laughs> This is one we're going to have to shake the dust off our feet. <laughs> this is one we got to keep on keeping on. It's time to move on. It's other people that's ready to hear the word of God. We don't need to spend another minute at this door. You can't make it no plainer than that. Amen. Some people you know, you have talked to them Amen. over and over Amen. and over again about the word of God. Amen. You can't make it no plainer Amen. than what the word says in the text. You can't make it no plainer than John 1 and 1 in the beginning was the word. And the word was God and the word was with God. You can't make it no plainer than John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not die but have a choice. You can't make it no plainer than that. And they still walk away. No soil. Yes, no soil. Yes, Look at the text. It says, it, it says here, it says, the devil comes, verse 12, and takes away the word. The devil comes to do what? To kill, steal, and destroy. He didn't just stole. He didn't yeah. just stole. Yeah. He's a thief. Yes, he the word went out and it returned void in the case of an unbeliever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the kid says it, and the devil takes away the word from their heart. Mm. And look at this. The devil has a plan. So y'all think the devil dumb. Mm -hmm. See, that's the problem. You think you're smarter than the devil. Mm -hmm. Don't you know that the devil is a fallen angel? Yeah. Don't you know that Outside of God, the devil will whip you and kill you and destroy you and steal from you. And yet you think you're smarter than the devil? Outside of Christ, he will kill you. Look at the text. It says, so that they may not believe. He don't want you to believe. And in that case of the person who has no soil, the devil is one. Yeah. Yeah. Unless God gives them another opportunity before they die. Yeah. Yeah. But should you close your eyes after that devil bird and swoop down and took the word out that was presented to you because you have no soil, because it fell in the soil of your dryness, it fell on the road with no dirt, it fell on asphalt, it fell on pavement. How can you grow something in asphalt? Yeah. Some of us hearts have been hardened. How can you grow something in concrete? It fell on the road. How can you grow something on that hard clay dirt? Yeah. Ain't no nutrients in that. That's clay. You can make pottery with it, but you sure can't grow no food. What's the condition of your soul? 
Are you roadside soil? <laughs> Say roadside soil. Roadside soil. I am, I am not, not roadside soil. Roadside soil. I hope you believe in what you say. Right. Amen. Roadside. Look at this here. There's another reason. So that they may not believe, and guess what? And not be saved. Oh, but you mean the devil want me to go to hell? Hell yeah. I can't say hell in that context. Why not? Yeah. That's not profanity. That's not cursing. That's not profane the name of God. You better know the devil wants you to go to hell. You got a problem with it, you're struggling with it right now. Amen. 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 Look at the text. It was very for some of those roadside soilers. Come on, come on. <laughs> that, that, see, see, that was no soil at all. Let's, let's talk about the next kind of soil. There's another kind of soil in verse 13. It says, and those on the rocky soil. Right. Rocky. Somebody say rocky soil. Rocky soil. Say rocky soil. Rocky soil. Now go to verse 6. And other seed fell on rocky soil. And as soon as it grew up, it withered away because it had no moisture. Rocky soil. Rocky soil. Now, now you live it better than the no soil. Thank you, Jesus. But but don't start banging your chest. Because see, this All is right. not a sprint. Yeah. It's a marathon. Yeah. Yeah. The race doesn't go to the swift. Yeah. But to he who endures yeah. to the end. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the text. It says in verse 13, And those on rocky saw are those when they hear receive the word with joy. All right. All right. That's good. You ever seen somebody hear the word? And they fool the heck out of you. Yeah. You feel so good because somebody didn't caught the word of God. And you're like, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And, and they put up such a good fight yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. at the beginning of the race. Yeah. 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 They ain't been tempted yet. Yeah. You see, God doesn't tempt. God tests, but the devil tempts. I, I, well, let's keep it to the text. It says, it says, and those on rocky saw are those when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no firm root. They believe for a while. Yeah. Let, 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 please somebody believe for a minute. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They believe for 90 days. All right, all right. They have the church house. They beat you to the church house. You got to open it up for them when they get there. <laughs> They 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 full of joy now. They 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 shot out the gun like a bullet. Yes, sir. Come over here. You ever seen people like that, Sister Man? Yes, sir. On fire for Jesus. Oh, and it says here, it says here, and these have no firm root. Why? Because they are rocky soil. Yeah. You know, you I don't know about you. I, 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 in front of our house in our subdivision, we have these deed restrictions. Uh -huh. Sometimes I want to choke them people. <laughs> They want to tell me when to cut my grass. Uh -huh. They want to tell me when to mow, when to edge. That's why me and my wife, if the Lord chooses to bless, we're going to give him glory for what he got us. If you keep us in until we die, praise the Lord. Amen. Uh -huh. But we have not because we ask not. <laughs> <laughs> and after a while, you get tired of paying them That's right. That's right. so much That's money a year to tell you <laughs> to cut your grass. You let folks into your house and try to take over. And you pay them to take over. Right, right, right. And if you don't cut your grass, it's in your left. Right. If you don't cut your grass, we're going to send somebody to cut it for you. Right. And instead of you paying 25, you're going to pay 65. Right. They sent me a letter not too long ago. It's been a drought. Well. It's been a drought. Pastor wasn't slipping. It's, it's been dry. Right. They sent me a letter and said, you need to weed your flower bed. What? Like, after I got over my initial anger and asked God for forgiveness, <laughs> I said, Well, Lord, ain't nothing wrong with telling me I need to go out there and, you know, my, my skirt is slipping. Let me pull it up a little bit. So I went outside and I 
up with myself and I started pulling up the weeds. And I know there's rocks outlining the, the flower bed All with the right, hedges yeah, and the flower. Right. And in between the rocks yeah, yeah. is where most of the weeds is going. I'm like, man, this is going to be a nightmare procedure because I ain't finna move all these rocks, pull up all these weeds, and put all these rocks back in place again. I don't know who they, man, let me go get some gas for my weeds so I can just chop them down to the surface of a rock and buy myself another weed. But as I've been told, and I started pulling on those weeds between the rocks, they just pulled right up. Uh, yeah. They just yes, take and put Easy. the whole root yes, in the yeah. All right, yes. All right. Hey. Yes, It was growing on rocky soil. Yeah. Yeah. It couldn't really catch root down in the dirt. Amen. All right, all right. Now it looked green. Yes, yes, right. As green as my hedges. Yes. I tell you, try to pull one of them up. Because right. 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 they planted straight in dirt. Yeah. And they roots one deep. And you just can't pull it up. You gotta go get a saw and cut it down. Yeah, right. But the roots of the weeds were kind of in rocky soil. Yeah. And I touched them, pulling it, it just came out, and the other one come out. And I just went all around. It took me like 15 minutes. I had it all put. I'm like, Lord, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> because it was growing in rocky soil. Yeah. It had no root. And it sprang up overnight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Two days later, it's back again. Yeah. But I'm like, no sweat. No problem. <laughs> because it's on rocky soil. Yeah. Some believe it's on rocky yeah. soil. Yeah. You right. don't catch root. Right, you grow up overnight. Yeah. You shoot out the gun like a bullet. Right. You fire the cannon like a ball. Yeah. You don't fight for the word of God. Yeah. But you ain't got no root. Yeah. Ask you why Jesus wept. You don't know why. Yeah. I say, remember the time when they didn't keep it holy. You say, why? <laughs> Look at the text. It says here, it says, it says, and these have no firm root. They believe for a while. Look at this. And in time of temptation, yeah. uh -huh. they fall away. Uh -huh. They fall away. Uh -huh. You know what I call quarter horse Christians. Uh -huh. Now get this. Get this. I already then said that the race doesn't go to the swift. Right. Or to the speed. Yes. But to he who endures until the uh -huh. end. Okay. So when we talk about a quarter horse Christian, My Lord. we talk about a Christian that's fat, Ben Johnson, Carl Lewis Christians. That's right. mm -hmm. You know what? It ain't about being Ben Johnson or Carl Lewis or who that knew when Usain Bolt, you know, the, the big tall African uh -huh. like to do this. <laughs> it ain't about being fast. It's about finishing the race. Amen. Finishing the race. Yes. It says in time when temptation, they give into it and they fall away. You on fire for Jesus, but your old habit of smoking dope creep up on you again. It says temptation. You on fire for Jesus, but you're young. You're not rooted in. And you think you're more than what you are in the Word. You forget you're on level one of Christianity. There's levels. There's milk and there's meat. You need to know where you're at. If you're on milk, know that you're on milk. And stay away from situations that meat Christians can walk away from. See, a meat Christian can walk past the bar and have been an alcoholic before. But a milk Christian can be drawn on in. And that since they got Jesus, yes, that's all they need. Yes, all right. Come on, man. All right. Amen. Yes, sir. The funny thing about a quarter horse Christian is that it's not about the speed. It's about finishing the race. Yeah. So the, it's an oxymoron to be a quarter horse Christian. A quarter horse Christian peters out. Yeah. One leg into the race. One time around the track, they fall into temptation, and then they fall off the wagon. Oh my God. And there's that meek Christian just, Thank you. they never done it. Yeah. There was bereavement before. They've been through marriage problems before. I pray over everything. Yeah. I pray without ceasing. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing weapon formed 
Come on, that's me, Christian. That's me, Christian. That's me, Christian. That's me, Christian. My middle preacher, like, whoa, that look good. Y'all pray for me. <laughs> Ain't no such thing as a quarter horse Christian. A quarter horse Christian is no Christian at all. Because if you don't finish the race, you are not here. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now come on up and enjoy the rest of your master. Ain't no quarter horse Christians. If you're a quarter horse Christian, you're going to hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Ain't no such thing as a corner of us Christian. You got to get mature to get yeah. into heaven, to withstand the temptations. Yes, Look at the text again. It says, verse 13, and these have no firm root. You better come to Sunday school, and these have no firm root. Yeah. You better come to Bible study, and these yeah. have no firm root. You better play with other believers, and these have no firm root. All you right. better read your word, yeah. and these yeah. have no firm root. Yeah. You better stay in meditation. And these have no firm root. How you gonna get your rootin'? Yes. 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 All right. Y'all right. think roots is about Kuta Kente. <laughs> roots is about Jesus saving. Amen. Get your root. Get your root. It's past time. Right. First to be drinking that summer like. Three, four years ago, I preached Similac or Sirloin. Uh -huh. You may not remember that. Uh -huh. It's past time to get past Similac, right. Infamil, Pablum, uh -huh. Cereal. Amen. Right. Grow up and prove yourself to be mature believers. Yes. Right. Look at the text. Right. It says, in time of temptation, they fall away. How are you going to withstand temptation unless you grew up? Unless you done got firmly rooted. You still come to church once a quarter. You still read your Bible only when the commentary or the devotional make reference to it. You read my daily bread, then you read the word of God. My daily bread is hurtful to some people because they replace the Bible with it. Look at the text. Let's, 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 let's go to this next type of Christian. If you're not a no soiler, if you uh, are a, a shallow soiler or a rocky soiler, as they call it, uh, if that's not you, maybe you fall into this category. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, that's why the title of the sermon was, What is the Condition of Your Soil? Amen. You make the determination. Yes. You provide the fix in the form of the Word of God. Look at verse 14. And the seed which fell among the thorns, mm -hmm. these are the ones who have heard, that's good, that's right. and as they go along their merry way, mm -hmm. they are choked with the worries and riches and pleasures mm -hmm. of this life. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, Come on down to verse 7. <laughs> or go back up to verse 7. Uh -huh. And it says, and other seed fell among the thorns, uh -huh. and the thorns grew up with it. And choked it out. Yeah. Some of y'all been choked out. Yeah. Some of y'all been choked out. Yeah. If I can see your spiritual picture, not your worldly picture, but if I can see a spiritual shot of you, I see the devil got his hand around the neck and the tongue. You turn him blue in the face because you been choked out. Bible said they heard. I heard. 
And so I go on my way. So I think I got it under control. I think I'm all that and a bag of salvation. I'm heard, Pastor Bills. Can't tell me nothing. I'm heard. You heard? I heard. What's between me? Not as you pray more than I do. Now that you study more than yeah. I do, now that you, you meditate more than I do, now that you walk more upright than I do, I heard you heard. Good yeah. enough for me. Yeah. Yeah. Have me go along my merry way. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the text. It says, it says these are the ones who have heard and as you are in the process of walking away. Right, it says as they go on their way. Sudden, they can't swallow no more. They, say, they are choked with worries and riches and the pleasures of this life. Boy, that's like the anti Trinity there. Yeah. That's like the evil. Look at this here. Let's, let's, let's take the one. It says they are choked by worries. Distractions. Oh, don't act like you don't forgot about Martha that fact. Some of us are still dealing with martheistic yeah. complexes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Distractions, worries. Yeah. 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 Is the sun going to come up tomorrow? Right. Mm. Am I going to have a job tomorrow? Huh. Right. Are my children going to be home tomorrow? Mm. My wife going to leave me tomorrow? Come on, come on. My car going to run tomorrow? All right now. Distractions. Yes, my check going to be in the mail tomorrow? Uh -huh. Am I going to pay my bills tomorrow? Come on. I'm going to finish my project. Distractions. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Yes, Jesus said, look at the grass of the field. Yes. I tell you, in all of his days, Solomon, the richest man ever, uh -huh. was never adorned as the lilies of the field. Uh -huh. If God takes care of them, yes. won't he take care of you? Yes. Yes. Only of yes. 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 Distractions. You gotta stop worrying. Yes. You gotta be unanxious. Stop being anxious. But with prayer and thanksgiving, present your request to God. Why you worried? Why you worried? Worry means that you have no faith. And if you have no faith, you are not an inheritor of the kingdom because kingdom people don't worry. They pray. Amen. Well, I'm not going to worry about this, but I am going to pray. Yeah, that's right. I'm not going to worry about this because I cannot change this Amen. other than giving it to God and let Him fix the situation. That's right. That's right. Amen. Look at this here. You might not worry. You might not worry. You, you, you might have defeated anxiety. You don't need to take Zantac. You don't need to take Raglan. You don't need to take Propulsion. You don't need to take all these Pepto Bismol and Kale Peptate because you don't worry. All right. Well, 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 maybe you got riches. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, maybe you got riches. Uh -oh. Well, uh, if somebody's struggling with that in true Bible, somebody tell me I don't know nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs> Black gold Texas tea. <laughs> Ain't nobody shot no hill and all come bumping yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. And if you won the lottery, you ain't tired. Oh, you. <laughs> you don't want the pastor to preach about it. <laughs> you don't want us to have to refund you that money. But just in case you're one of those closet rich people, yes, you've been able to pull off that you not rich by coming to this church, but you're really going home to a place that everybody in here would love to go to. If you fall into that category, and you've been putting the wool over everybody else's eyes, we need to preach on sincerity and honesty. Amen, amen. But just in case you're rich, yeah, you, uh, you, you, and you don't pay as much taxes as everybody else do. You, 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 you need to understand that 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 will choke you out. Because a rich man has to worry about how to keep his money. 
I need a tax shelter for this, and I need to give away about 25% of this so I can have a 50% shelter on the rest of it. Now, uh, 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 I need to be careful who I give it to because I can't give more to the liberals than I do the, 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 what's the opposite of liberal? Conservative. The conservative, amen. Conservatives, amen. And, 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 and I need to think about how much to put in this account because if that bank fold, I want them to take all my money. So I need to put a quarter here, a quarter here, and a quarter there. And I need to put something in that Swiss bank account that I can do anything with nobody going to bother me about. You worrying if you got money. It takes real maturity to be a believer and have money. And it's possible. It's possible. But that believer is going to always be out in public giving every time of it away. Now, he ain't going to give it away until he's broke. But he's always giving it away. And God is always giving him more. Don't worry about your money. Don't worry about nothing. Don't you're, oh, okay, oh, geez, you ain't got no money, so I ain't got to spend too long now. Let, 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 let's come back. Let, let's come back. Uh, it, it says here, okay, now you might have an issue with the pleasures of this life. All right, you ain't got to have money to have some fun. You don't need money to have fun. So you could be struggling with the pleasures of this life. You can hide that too. We don't know you coming there holy rolling. Amen. It's all right to roll holy if you holy rolling, but you can't perpetrate a holy roll. You coming up in here and you having all kinds of fun out there, Amen. and that fun is about to whip you down. Amen. And what it calls you physically, yes. what you can catch out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all enough right. said. And what it calls you mentally, all right. All right. and what it can do to your head. What it can cost you spiritually, uh -huh. your eternal life. Yeah, man. Yes, Lord. You getting choked out. Yeah. You preaching, You getting choked out. <laughs> and the devil just has his horns around your neck, his hands around your neck, and you can't breathe no more because you think you got it understood. All right, all right. Well, your soul ain't got no firm root. If you get some firm roots, you can resist the devil and he will flee. That's right. How are you going to make the devil flee if you don't even know the word of God? Amen. Amen. What is Amen. the condition of your soul? Oh, that's good. What's the condition of your soul? Mm -hmm. Look at this here. Look at this, look, 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 look at this here. It says, they're choked out from the worries and the pleasures of this life and they bring no fruit to maturity. You know how I can know whether you're being choked out? You receive the word. Amen. You go on your merry way. Right. Nobody else ever comes to the kingdom as a result of what you say mm -hmm. or what you do. Mm -hmm. There's no increase to you. It starts with you and it ends with you. All right, now. Don't y'all know we'd have been felt this church completely up mm -hmm. if we do what we're supposed to do? Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. If Amen. we don't what we're supposed to do, there will not be an empty chair in this a little church. That's right. To God be the glory. Amen. He's trying to condition us spiritually to get to the next level. I know what he's doing. Amen. But I'm gonna speak the truth. Amen. If we was doing what we were supposed to do, if we was walking the walk like we supposed to walk the walk all the time, if we was all spiritually mature where we need to be, don't you know that we will have attracted enough people to have knocked that wall down and taken that space over there, enough people to make enough noise to upset them people next door to where they want to give up their lease and move? And before long, you tell one friend, they'll tell another, and so on, and so on, and so on. And before you know it, we got this whole building. Amen. Yes, sir. But until God matures us to where he wants us to be, yes, we're going to be right here, half empty, half full. Amen. Half empty, half full. That's not an indictment. That's the truth of his word. No, come on now, just don't, don't leave me. It says, and as they go on their way, they are choked out with the words and riches and pleasures of life and bring no fruit 
A seed is meant to grow. Amen. This is all about soil. Seeds, soil. This is all the process of planting and growing. If we're planting and there's no growth, need I say more? Mm -hmm. Look at the text. Look at the text. And bring no fruit to maturity. Who have you told about Jesus when you went along your merry way? Mm -hmm. No, you too busy worrying about that debt. You too busy worrying about that cancer you was diagnosed with. All right, I got cancer. Oh, hey, time to pray. Worrying ain't gonna do nothing but make it grow faster. Amen. And God, when you call me home to live as Christ, to die as gain, but while I'm here, I'm gonna fight the good fight. I gotta tell people about you, Jesus. You got they said doctors say six months, you can make it six years, but the doctors may know a little something about this, and that may be your will. I got six months, I'm gonna tell everybody about Jesus. I want fruit to be produced through my testimony, through my will, through my way, through my walk for your glory to the benefit of the kingdom. Amen. Look at the text. Look at the text. Y'all you, might fall into this category. I don't know. I'm, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Be, be, uh, slow your roll. Don't just jump out there. I'm not, no indictment against anybody. Just listen to the words of God. Listen to the words of God. If you know, you know. Amen. If you know, you know. Amen. Look at it. It says here. And the fourth type of soil. See, those last three were superficial. All right. This fourth one is essential. Right now. And the seed in the good soil. These are the ones who have heard the word in an honest and good heart yeah. and hold it fast and bear fruit with perseverance. Yeah. Verse 8, that sounds like a mature believer. Verse 8, and other seed fell into the good soil and grew up and produced a, produced a, produced a crop a hundred times as great. A hundred times as great. Come back to verse 15. These are the ones who have heard, that's a good thing, the word, but look at the difference. They heard in an honest and good heart. They heard with no ulterior motive. They heard with sincerity. They heard with humility. They heard with joy. They heard with a Mission. Yes. They wasn't just seeking what God can do for them. Man. They're seeking what they can do for the kingdom. All right. It says they heard with an honest and good heart. Hmm. God already knows when you hear the word of God. If your heart, which is your soul, your heart, it say my heart, my heart. is my soul. Because that's where you receive God's word. Yes, Amen. They heard with an honest and good heart. The reason why the devil can come and pluck your seed is because your heart ain't honest and good. All right. The reason why you wither up and burn up and go away is because your heart is not an honest and good heart. All right. That's the word of God. Yeah. If you can't receive it, it's because your heart is not honest and good. All right. That's his word. That's his word. Look at it. It says here, if you can't receive it because you're being choked out, it's because your heart is not honest and good. Right. All right now. If you're worried, that means your heart ain't honest and good. Because right. 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 Mm. you're not trusting in God. That's right. I know this is taking some of you by surprise because some of you worry. Yes. Mm -hmm. Some of you being choked out. That's right. Some of you shoot out like a bullet and all out three quarters of the way before you get to the end of the race. Look at it. It says, an honest and good heart. Not only do they receive it with purity and sincerity and honesty and goodness of heart, but they hold on for their life and hold it fast. They, hold, they don't let it go. Come hell or high water. They don't let it go, church. Come divorce, come bankruptcy, come infirmity, come illness, disease, disorder, and they don't let it go. When it rain on your life, trust in the word of God. Yeah. Amen. 
whatever you're going through, trust in the word of God. Don't let go. Tie a knot at the end of your rope of faith. Thank you. And hang on for dear life. Amen. Don't let temptation get you. Don't let anxieties get you. All right. God forbid you got no sword at all. Mm. Look at that. They hold it fast and they provide, they provide proof of what they have placed their faith in. It says, and they bear fruit with perseverance. Uh -huh. They increase the kingdom. They bring other peoples to Christ because of their walk. And it says with perseverance. That means that it's not easy what they're doing. All right. It means that while they are fighting the good fight, Amen. they getting slapped around. Amen. But they still get up. Yeah. They getting slapped around. Amen. They don't stay on the ground. Uh -huh, yeah. They getting slapped around. They still giving glory to God. That's right. They're going through tough times. Mm, yes. And they refuse to succumb to temptation. Mm. They're going through hell and high water. Right. And they're not worried about being anxious. All right. They're praying. Yeah. They're studying. Yeah. They're down on their knees. They're petitioning God. Amen. They're giving him the glory in the good and in the bad. Amen. Yes, That's how you give God the glory. That's how you know that the soil of your heart is essential soil. I am, I am essential soil. Righteousness. You better believe, church. Most gracious Father in heaven.